this dodo because it's like snail and prawns. Woo! With dodo. Look at that. Tash Bistro. Yeah. Such a superstar. Now, the climax of my time with the band, I would say, would be <laughs> that performance. <laughs> of <laughs> the <laughs> For the last six <laughs> years, no, of my no, 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 in every city we've been to, I've felt like I'm walking with my girls. Right here. Right here. Yeah. This should be fun. In fact, my journey is and has been an inspiring. You know, share something with me, and she looked at me. Oh, the end. I rush here. Don't watch me. I just wanted to know that it's because of refuel. Oh, check. Sorry, sorry. How many people know the man discovered the case? How many people knew that? I didn't discover it. The same case has been discovered since. Hello, I'm Kiran, the Mr. Real. They are very, they are lungu, and they have been doing some things. The same case had what some called um. What you show? What you show? What you show? What you show? <laughs> but but I actually like the first time I met them together, I was saying Mr. Rio is wooed through Craig platform with his foot. And when he was coming, he brought slim case with him. And then they brought a gift. And they even brought the producer of the song, Cracker, Cracker. Cracker. And I believe from that day he will testify that the Abimala Pipirimpi. Pepe Rimpe, sugar, 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 sugar. What's good, guys? So, quick one, yeah? I came across something on my phone. Um, every weekend, I try to do like a deleting kind of stubs just to make sure that I have enough space on my phone. And I came across something, and there's sometimes when there's certain things I read or come across online that I take a screenshot of that I want to discuss. And sometimes I remember them, sometimes I don't. Anyways, this one, I saw it and I just thought, to share and the reason why i'm thinking to share is because i don't know about you lot here but i'm talking about the fact that you know of recent times i um occasionally i come back from work and i'm home alone which i live by myself obviously and um you know i feel lonely and the times when you know it's it's nice to have someone to call to just say my day went this way to just have someone to band with and i realized that of late it's become more than usual and i think that's because i'm finally at that point whereby i think i'm ready to settle down in terms of you know being in a relationship and hopefully in a relationship that will lead to marriage and every time my friends keep talking about you know there's some friends that oh maybe we're having a conversation and they're like oh who are you saying now and i'm like everybody they're like maybe it's because you're being picky and i'm like you can't say that because you've never even tried to introduce me or hook me up with someone and 
Um, yeah, but anyways, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, as much as I'm ready to get into a relationship that would lead into my marriage, I feel like a lot of us rush into certain things or rush into marriage to be specific. Let me not sugarcoat it. Without necessarily thinking about the things that we want to do and the things that we want out of marriage, but minus even that as well, thinking about the things that we bring into marriage. I think a lot of people get into marriage with a very, very warped, that's the word, warped, yeah. Um, 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 expect which warped expectations and don't go into it full on understanding. There was a time when my, I think one of my first vlogs when I was talking about the fact that, you know, I'm trying to make myself whole. So that I run into a man who's whole as well and to be, together we become wholesome. I genuinely mean that. So I've taken time out and I'm still working on myself and I definitely, even when I eventually get married, I think I'll still be a work in progress as well. But I think it's important to know what you don't want and to know what you want and to have a full perspective of what it is. So I came across this thing on a page where um, it was a couple who were finalizing their divorce. And so they decided to give five marital lessons that they learned along the way. And so that's why I just quickly want to share with you lots. So the first one says, take the time to really get to know yourself, your purpose, your vision, your priorities, and your core values before committing yourself to someone else for life. Get clear on your non-negotiables and on your deal breakers before saying I do. Otherwise, your newfound vision can create division if it's not in alignment for them to have made this number one and paramount is so important because there are key points here guys you know they said get to know yourself a lot of people don't have time to get to know themselves and so when they get into marriage they're trying to figure out who they are and there's no time for that because you're in marriage now it's meant to be like a situation where you've come into yourself so you're not trying to get to know this person and try to find a way to balance your personality with this person's personality. But if you're going into marriage totally unaware of who you are, how can you want to give something you don't have to somebody else? I don't know, to me anyways. And you know, it's important. Um, get clear on your non-negotiables. I think a lot of people in our generation get into marriages thinking it's going to be easy and then certain things happen and then you're like, nope, I can't do this. He does not say no. He does not put the toilet seat down. She does not know how to cook. These things seem small to you. But when you're finally in a committed marriage, the expectations that you have and if the other person can't give it to you, then what do you do? So, yo, th this is so profound. It's amazing. Um, point two is, even if you believe you've heard from God, there's no need to rush to the altar. This is so key. Take your time and enjoy the process of courtship or you'll find yourself getting to know each other after you're already married. Now, I think in our generation, we get so caught up with, you know, um, moving straight from dating into marriage that we don't understand that there's a process and there's a step to things. I genuinely think there is. To me, dating is casual in terms of the fact that it's you trying to take time out to get to know a person. So hanging out, having fun, eating together. I think where it becomes very complicated is because most people who start dating people tend to be physically involved with the person as well and once there's fluids then everything else is out the window to be honest with you and people forget that you know after dating is when courtship comes in and courtship courtship is pretty much the point whereby you say okay we've gone for me just talking to you and possibly still having other open conversation with other people as to me just focusing on you and say that okay now we have more from dating now it's time for us to get to know each other one-on-one -on -one personally spiritually as well so yeah courtship is so important number three before getting married make sure your priorities are compatible and don't ignore core values i keep saying this thing and i never understood it until some years ago you know my mom used to say something about you know it's important that um um you marry people of the same pedigree and I think I've said that before and after I used to be like oh, what do you mean pedigree I beg please 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 what is important the reason why is because people of like minds and pedigree tend to have similar core values and for me those things are so important there's a certain way in which I want to raise my kids that I'm hoping that whoever I get married to eat that just agrees and lets me raise them in that way or not a situation where we're about arguing about certain things like for example by the grace of god i would love my kids to be able to go on school you know internationally by the grace of god i have some friends that their husbands don't want it regardless of whether they have the money or not they want their kids to school here 
internationally when it comes to the university sector and i don't want that i want my kids when it comes to university to be able to go out there and explore and see the world those things seem basic right now but when you're in it it could cause a lot of you know turbulence so yeah um also while marriage takes compromise there are some things that can be compromised and i totally agree it's the same way and i would i would maybe use this for an example of religion people in our generation talk about how oh no as long as i love the person it's not that deep to me religion is not something i would compromise i want to marry a christian i want to marry a man of faith it is simple it is dotted because i promised god certain things that as i've gotten older he has met me so i've promised him certain ways in which i'm going to raise my children and one of it is in the foundation and on the foundation and in the arms of christ so i can't even go back on that so it's like yo i can compromise so based off of that i can marry any person who is not a christian i just wouldn't i wouldn't compromise on that i already know that do you know that that this is an example like i said before but the point is you need to know what you can compromise on and what you can't compromise on period eventually either you will try to be someone you're not or you try to change the other person into someone they're not and it won't work that is so important i think a lot of us also get into relationships and marriages you know trying to change someone and it's so laughable right now when i think about certain situations that i've been in and i've tried to change someone you can't change a man or you can't change a woman they need to be willing to and when they get to that point it has to be for themselves you can't you can influence it but you can't make it happen so yeah number four marriage takes work yo no marriage is perfect i don't need to be in one to know the stories i hear the struggles i see with my friends they're just trying to make everything work it takes work it's a constant choosing it's a choice every time you wake up next to your husband and your wife you choose to make it work and it is work it is work don't underestimate the amount of work that it takes to build a strong marriage go to marriage seminars together before getting married very important that's what we're trying to show in skinny girl in transit you know when we we're making sure that they had all the se um, sessions with um pastor bright White. it wasn't because it was a joke a friend of mine who recently got married talked about how you know during their marriage counseling it was the best thing that ever happened to them marriage counseling is so important it's so important it helps you guys grab it helps you guys stay very grounded i know people who have gone into marriage counseling and came out breaking off the engagement because they realized that there were certain core values that they just didn't have. So it's important to go to marriage counseling. It's important to go to seminars before you get married. Um, make sure you're both willing to put in the work together. Definitely. One person cannot afford to pull a relationship on their own. It takes two to tangle. It needs to be a joint effort. You decide if you want it to be 40, 60. It just needs to be both parties coming together and choosing to work on it. It's important um if you don't grow together you're going to grow apart very very true there's no way you can be in a relationship and a marriage actually and as a man or a woman and you're constantly growing your business is growing and your husband or your wife is staying stagnant you will fall apart one way or the other you need to try and pull the other person up and you might say it's not your business it's not your but once you're married it becomes automatically your business if your husband's business is suffering, guess what? Your marriage will suffer because it would show in his attitude at home. If your wife is not thri thriving and she's not happy, it would show. So you need to make her interest, your interest. It doesn't be a common interest. So yeah, these points are so valid. And then the last one is hindsight is 2020. We may not be able to change the past, but we can. Well, what we can do is make the best of our current situation and of the future out of love and respect for ourselves and for our sons life does not always work out exactly how we planned but god can still get the glory from our story so that five is just pretty much trying to tell you that see sometimes hindsight is 2020 if you have intuitions about anything just you know pay attention just follow it and at the end of the day all you can do is you can't really change the past so what someone has done in the past is just how you can move forward and this really 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 touched me they also went on to say you know we truly believe all things work together for the good of those who love the lord and are called according to his purpose god can still make something good out of our situation we are both proud of our lives together we've built things over th 13 years and though this marriage and through this marriage the most wonderful miracle was born they have a son called jacob and for that they'll always be grateful so 
they're excited to new beginnings and new starts and they said by no means are they celebrating divorce but now that it's finalized they just choose to focus on making the best out of one their next step and chapter so to me those one to four points are really important and i just stumbled upon it again on like i said on my you know in my gallery and i was like you know what? yeah it's important that we share and i wanted to share this out because as much as i'm like i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready the reason why i won't settle is because i want whoever it is that i'm dating or whoever it is i end up with to understand that these things are very important core values are very important foundation is very important going into marriage knowing who you are knowing what you stand for what you value what is important to you is also very important as well by no means should anybody go into marriage trying to figure themselves out because Yo, what you find, you might find yourself, nobody's disputing that, but you might also lose yourself. Meaning that if you find yourself, the person who you went into the marriage with that saw you in a different way would see you in a totally different way. And then to them, you've lost who you were. While to you, you've gained something else. I'm hoping that makes sense. But anyways, I just wanted to share. I don't want it to be a long video. I'm just saying if you're out there and you're single, this is the time to reflect. This is the time to love yourself. This is the time to understand your strengths and your weaknesses. These are the times to know what you can compromise on and what you can't. These are the times to set your core values and say, this is what I believe in. This is what I want to take into when I move into my husband or my wife's house. You just need to take this single time to just, you know, own it own it and if you're married and you know things are going smoothly for you i'm happy for you thank god for that and if you're married and things are not going as smoothly communication is always important i feel like a lot of people in our generation that are married do not talk to themselves you live in the same house you have conversations but you don't have conversations most of you talk at yourselves most of you don't talk to yourselves and there are times when i've heard about people and marriages just breaking up Whereas if people just sat down and communicated, it would have just been easier. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm this. I'm going to say this. Christ is there for us all. But don't be one of those people that get so caught up in praying that you do not practice. I don't know if you, I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense. A lot of people pray. They don't practice what they what what they read. They don't practice what they see in the Bible. So don't just take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer and be active as well in trying to improve your situation and in trying to improve your marriage. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that really quick because, you know, it was heavy on me and I just said I should share. So, I hope you all have a great week. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Um, let's try and see if we can get to 25,000 in the next, like, two months. I think it's possible. I don't know. Am I reaching? If you think I'm reaching, let me know, man. Shoot. But uh, yeah, man, I appreciate you guys. I see you guys. You guys are amazing. And spread love and be happy. Okay, I think I spoke too much. Bye, guys. Goodbye. And do comment, you know, do comment below and let me know what you think as well. If there are any points that you've experienced while single or while married or anything that you think would help people out there, because I'm all about, you know, trying to educate the next man the best way that I can. And if I see something I want to share so that, you know, conversation i feel like in our generation we all just we don't have conversation about certain things and things that matter i think we do a lot of fluff we don't do a lot of talk so that's what i feel so let me know what you think in the comments below until next time i remain your girl it's your chick it's bimbo mm. whoa so extra bye guys I hate Solomon, I hate boxing, I hate squats, I hate everybody. Walk out, walk out. Boy, I touch me pin for your kids. So many men, you are so bad. Oh my god, stop coming to this gym. People are crazy.